Assalamu alaikum everyone and today we are going to be talking about limits. Calculus likes to play around with a lot of concepts but its favorite concept is infinity. Infinity is not a number. Infinity is a concept. It can it just means something that never ends. It's sort of like a size. The n the amount of steps you have to take, the amount of positive integers there are, an infinite number of things. It behaves a lot like a number, but it also doesn't. To clarify more on infinity, you I highly recommend you check out Vsauce's Banach-Tarski paradox video. It provides a lot of information about the absurdity of infinity and as a bit of a caveat to the rest of calculus I highly recommend you review on your algebra because this step from algebraic equations to calculus is too difficult so I highly recommend you review that so calculus wants to play around a lot with infinity now what does that have to do with limits let's first introduce what a limit is Say we have a function x squared. Now, say in this equation, of which I would read as the limit as x approaches 3 of x squared is 9. This is because as x approaches 3, x squared approaches 9. You can check this out with a calculator as you square numbers closer and closer to 9. So 2.9 squared is 8.91. 2.99 squared is equal to 8.9401. So it gets uh, closer and closer to 9. Or you could have directly substituted it. However, there's the concept I'm trying to give here is that we can get arbitrarily close to the number 3. As close as I want, but we can't reach the number. That's what the limit is trying to say. Now, why do we have to introduce this notation? Let's talk a little bit about the first time you learn functions. Now, y is equals to whatever worked perfectly fine for, for, your, for your thoughts. But why would you need f of x? Why would you need the function notation when y was working very well? Because you can talk about things that you couldn't have talked about, like an even function, an odd function. This is also important about limits. As you can see in x squared, it would have been 9, but it won't be the same in this example. The limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x is equals to what? Now, unlike the first example, you can't just substitute infinity. Infinity is not a number. Remember that. It's a concept. So you can't just slap infinity into x and get a number. But what this function is trying to tell us is that this is 1 over a huge number. So if you were to, you know, again, use the method of exhaustion to try to get as close as you can to infinity, you can't get that close to it, but you can see the results. 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.0000001, 0 and this is too hard to write out. I'll just write 1 times 10 to the negative 100. As you can see, it gets closer and closer to 0. So the limit uh, as x approaches infinity of 1 over x is equal to 0. Let's take a look at another example. The limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x. Now, let's try to draw 1 over x in a graph. You see, this has two branches. Why is this important? Remember, we can, and then as it gets close to zero from the positive end, it approaches positive infinity. It's arbitrarily close. It won't reach there, but it gets close arbitrarily. But if you were to apply it from the negative direction, you would have approached negative infinity. So there could be two answers. So the limit does not exist. 
And this is where our new notation comes in. We add a plus or minus sign. It looks kind of like a charge or an exponent, but it really isn't. And this just implies if the function is being used from the positive side or from the negative side. So that's our introduction with limits. But we still haven't covered how this solves our infinite curiosity. To check that out, make sure to subscribe and leave a like and comment down below because we are going to be covering a huge amount of calculus in the next upcoming videos. And thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!